Good morning. It is 9.09 .09 a.m. on Tuesday, November 26th, 2019. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. I haven't been upstairs to look outside yet, but we got a bunch of snow last night, and it's supposed to continue all morning today. So today is definitely a day where they're saying, you know, don't go anywhere if you don't need to. So probably a stay in house all cozy, except for the time that you have to bundle up to go shovel the driveway day. That's fine. So uh, yesterday I went to go see Ford versus Ferrari and uh, with my dad, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But I'm also just briefly distracted because I was scrolling through Twitter and I'm just seeing renewed arguments from people who are still mad about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Well, I guess I guess it makes sense that we'll be stirring it up again because the new movie's coming out. So I guess still is not the appropriate word there. It is the lingering resentments have flared up again. But uh, just in case anyone is hungry for Christiana's take on that, um, you probably have already gleaned it to some extent. But what I would say is I really liked The Last Jedi. I think I don't agree with most of the criticisms of, of it I've heard. But what I will say is anyone who wants to say that they want to, you know, criticize like the plot structure or characterization or those sorts of things, those story choices that were made, like, I disagree, but that's a fair argument. But... Boy, do I have zero patience for the people who want to say things like Leia in space is unrealistic. Whoa. No, 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 no. That's stupid. That is a stupid argument, and people who make it... I'm not going to say they are stupid, but they're making a stupid argument. I make stupid arguments, too, sometimes. So, it's not a reflection on who they are as a human being, but I will say... Critiques about, I did not like this story decision, totally legit. Critiques like, but but you can't survive in space. And they're like, anyway, Ford versus Ferrari. It's pretty good. Uh, I think that uh, if you're not familiar at all with it, if you haven't even heard about it, because you only follow sci-fi stuff, which, hey, I don't totally blame you. Uh, the basic idea is it's telling the true story of how in the 60s, the Ford Motor Company was trying to revitalize its image, and it decided it might want to try to do that by getting sportier. And so one of the things they were going to do is get into racing and buy Ferrari, which was like the premier racing car at that time. And uh, Ferrari basically said, no, screw you. We're not going to let you buy us and made it personal for Henry Ford II. And then the, so Ford said, well, yeah, well, I'm just going to pour a, tons of money into making our own new racing car. And, uh, it, so the story of this movie though, is about two of the people who mostly just actually really care about racing, who kind of get, tossed up in the storm of these corporate titans um, having personal grudge matches. Um, but it's interesting because it takes some of the themes of, uh, you know, I tweeted this, uh, it shares more commonality with Speed Racer than I expected. And not just the fact that they're both about racing, but in particular, themes about how there is a purity to racing because it is just this idea of you're just going to try to go as fast as you can and that's hard to do so not everybody can do it and it's complicated and it requires a team you have to have people building the car you have to people have people running the pit crew and it's like like there's there's a purity of sport in just trying to go as fast as you can right but the only way to actually do it to have the resources necessary necessary to be competitive requires that you be beholden to these massive corporate interests. 
and uh, the struggle is how, you know, in order, you know, just being a good racer isn't enough. You have to decide how much compromise you're willing to accept in order to be able to do this thing you love. And that's very much in common with uh, speed racers about that also. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a more sophisticated take on those themes because I think it recognizes that the, you know, how much compromise can you take? Zero isn't really a realistic option. <laughs> But so it's uh, but it's a great story. And so it's, you know, I, my understanding is that it's pretty significantly fictionalized, but based on the real story. And uh, it stars Matt Damon as someone who used to be a great racer, but due to a medical condition, he just can't do it anymore. And that's kind of heartbreaking for him. But, you know, he doesn't want to die either. So he tries to stay in the racing adjacent circle. And then we have uh, Christian Bale playing uh, Ken Miles, who is another extraordinarily gifted racer, but has a lot of trouble with the playing the game part that Matt Damon's character, Carol Shelby, is better at. And so they kind of team up to try to navigate the seas of this corporate grudge match and just build a really great racing car and then race it and race it well and win, right? Isn't that exciting? I think it is. It's a good. It's a good movie. It's uh, the the racing photography is really exciting. Uh, it's well done. I think the movie is maybe a touch long. Like I think that there's probably stuff in the middle that could have been tightened. But uh, by and large, I think it's really good. It's got good performances. I. It's an interesting little bit of history that I really didn't know much about. Uh, oddly enough, my dad, who is a car enthusiast, knew all about it and was able to point out several things that I, I didn't realize. And uh, yeah, so, but uh, honestly, I think it's really good. I recommend it. So, um, you know, obviously there's this time of year and this year, there's a lot of movies competing for your m movie dollars. And so, eh, you know, but I, what I'll say is Ford versus Ferrari. Yes, it's good. I, th I think it's worth watching. So I'll leave it there and I'll talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes.